Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors, your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Bill Allen sitting in for Winston Chester. Today is Monday, October the 19th. Uh, we want to go ahead and take a look at our weather um, brought to us by Haney Technical Center. High today of 75 with a low tonight of 56. So the cool's kind of continuing from this wonderful weekend that we had. Going to be a little windy north about 15 miles an hour on average. So uh, you got to be aware of that. But anyway, the tides today in Panama City, the high tide uh, was at 1.43 a.m. this morning. Uh, which I missed, but the low at 1.04 p.m. Uh, we've got a great show lined up for you today. There's a lot of things that we want to cover. Um, I've got some video to set some things up later on, and we're going to talk about fly fishing the river. So stay tuned, and we'll be right back. All right, welcome back. Um, I got the, uh, let's look at the, uh, the river readings first, because um, it's, uh, pertaining to what we're going to be talking about today, but the Apalachicola near Bluntstown is at 2.4 feet, a little, just flat, maybe a slight fall to it. With the Choctatchee River at Carryville, it's at 2.9, and, and it is basically just flat. So you got a lot of low water, and you know, we always talk about anytime the river's that low, you have to really be careful you know, when you're running around because there are things sticking up that, you know, you don't know are there that can be really ruin your day and your prop and your lower unit at the same time. So especially, you know, if you're in the creeks, um, you know, like Harrison's or Smokehouse or something like that, there are some definite day ruiners in there. <clears throat> so just be really careful when you're running around. Now, I get a lot of questions when I run into people in tackle stores or blue water, wherever, <clears throat> about fly fishing. I mean, I love to fly fish, whether it's salt water or fresh water, and, and, or, and up in the mountains, you know, and I make those two or three trips every year to go. Um, personally, I think anything that you can catch on a fly rod is better. More fun, takes a little more skill, maybe. But uh, we get a lot of questions about that. So today we're going to talk about um, just freshwater fly fishing, whether it's the river or some of these sandhill ponds or the lake. Uh, just a basic setup. You don't need much to do it. It's not expensive. Small box of tackle and, and you're ready to go. Um, I, I got the opportunity uh, uh, Friday before last to go down and spend some time with my good buddy Keith Roundtree on uh, Red Bull Island and uh, Keith and I go back to high school together and I mean the only problem with Keith is you'll see we got a short little video coming up is he just talks you to death but uh, anyway no, Keith's a man of few words but he knows uh, that Red Bull Island end of the river and dead lakes as well as anybody. We've had some very successful bass fishing trips and many successful fly fishing trips I mean, he and his dad fish down there quite a bit still so uh so we were down there and i had one of the strangest things happen to us that's that's ever happened we had we got there on friday afternoon we ran down the river a little bit and uh, as we started fishing back we came across a houseboat that was burned out and uh, it had a stove sitting on it but it was completely charred to the water line and and as Keith and I were fishing back, uh, we were talking, and he knows that end better than I do. And he said, you know, I don't really remember this houseboat that much. And uh, we didn't really think of any, anything about it, assumed that it was just there tied off. So as he took the trolling motor and went around it, and we started fishing again, in just a minute, you heard the awfulest noise that you want to hear on the water. You hear all this cracking tree limbs breaking the houseboat moves or what's left of the houseboat platform move which was pretty good size the stove falls off in the water i thought keith had jumped in at that point and this thing broke loose and it, it, we were right on the other side of it downstream of course and keith whips us around you know gets us out far enough from it 
and it's amazing at the strength of that river flowing. It just, that's not where the houseboat was originally at. I don't know how far it came or how much damage it did, but there were a lot of houseboats below us that, uh, you know, this thing just takes off. But we, we did get safely out of the way. So uh, you always have to watch what you're doing at the river, but that was as unusual as it comes. So we're gonna go right now, this little short video to kind of set up the weekend and uh, then we'll be right back talking about what we used and how we used it. Good morning, folks. It is just after daylight at Red Bull Island in Weewahitchika, Florida. And we are about to fly fish this morning. And this is the fish camp, if that's what you want to call it, of my good buddy Keith Roundtree. Now we fished yesterday afternoon. We had a couple hours to go and we caught maybe 10 really nice brim and we're not doing anything but fly fishing and it looks like a gorgeous morning out here. And we have high hopes for the fly fishing this morning. And Keith's had this place down here since I think 1993 and I've had the privilege of coming down here with him several times to uh, to fish and have a long weekend. He's got his fire pit out there. And now he's finally got up. Keith Roundtree, proud member of Bay Eyes 1976 State Championship football team. Keith, what are we gonna do this morning? We're gonna go wet a hook, man. <laughs> Keith's man of, a man of many words here. But uh, how long you been fishing this end of the river, Keith? Basically, I um, grew up coming down here with my dad when I was a little boy. Dead leads. When did y'all build this house? 92. Back in 92. And I'll tell you what, folks, it's, you can call it a fish camp, but it's very <laughs> nice up here. Place I know Keith spends a lot of time. So, uh, anyway, we're fixing to head out and see if we can do some damage on the brim scene this morning. Keith, what you got there, buddy? Is that what we've been looking for? Yeah. Son. There we go. Turn around and show me that fish. Yes, sir. A fine fish. Good job. Welcome back. I uh, hope you enjoyed that little short video. There was quite a bit more, but I'm going to blame it on the camera and not necessarily my technical skills. Jeff's laughing at me back here. I don't think he believes me. But um, it, it, if you haven't fly fished in, in, in the rivers, what I'm talking about, or the, or the, de, or the sand hill ponds or dead lakes, it is so enjoyable and you can start doing it without spending a lot of money. Um, I, this is the rod that I use down there and, and it, like I said, you don't have to buy a, a five or six or seven hundred dollar Orvis rod like you use in the mountains. Uh, this is a St. Croix, it's an eight foot, two piece rod. It's a four weight and, you know, I like four or less, four weight, three weight because you get a lot of play, you get a lot of action. You start getting over that and the rod's very stiff and you know, you just don't get the play, uh, you know, that you don't get the fun. You know, you don't get a big brim, doesn't run you around a little bit. But uh, it's just uh, you buy the fly line uh, based on the weight of the rod. And there'll be a range, and you can buy it based on the weight of the rod. Now, one thing, this has a lot of memory to it, and this is a smaller spool over here. This also matches, and you can buy sets out there for probably under 50 bucks that you can get started. Brim are not that hard to fool, so you don't have to have a lot of sophisticated equipment. But make sure that you have backing, which is very tough to see on here, but it's just a white, like a 20 pound test. It, you know, it's maybe, uh, maybe seven or eight bucks. 
but you, you want to put 75 to 100 yards of line of backing on there, attach your fly line to it, uh, and that will make, obviously it makes the loop bigger so you don't have as much tight coil when you, when you start to get a lot of line out, if you do, you know, get a lot of line out. But, um, but I, I've had this rod for several years. It's just been a great rod for, for fishing down there. It's, uh, it's light, easy to use. And then, uh, thanks Jeff, I don't want to lose it right now. Um, what you want is a leader, and you don't have to get into the nine and 10 foot leaders that you do in other places. This is about six, six, six maybe, if that's supposed to be how tall you are. Well, I'm not quite six, six, but anyway. Um, and it is just, it's easy to buy. You can get it like this, Jeff. I know we can't see this, but this is just, a, a, it's called Tippet, uh, but it's a seven pound, 2X, and I also have, uh, well, it's another seven pound. It's a 3X, just a little bit different diameter. But like I said, it's seven pound is plenty. You don't have to worry about having the tapered leaders to make it turn over uh, the way you do like in the mountains and, and that kind of thing. So um, we're gonna talk about some of the knots and I've got something you know bigger to show you here a couple of different ways to attach leader to line. But when we're running like we did, you know, what we're looking for is eddies, places where the current is going around the, you know, around the bank where you've got some still water so you can you can keep a fly, uh, you know, in range there and it's not moving so fast that the fish have to chase it down all the time. Uh, now you want to you want to make sure that your line is floating well too. Uh, and it also, you know, you want to you want to clean it. It gets stuff from the river and, and, and dirt on it. Uh, this is just a little scientific angler's fly line dressing that I keep in my little tackle box, which I'll show you uh, in a little bit. Just comes with a simple foam pad on it. And what you want to do is you want to pull out maybe 20 yards of line or 10 yards of line, depending on where you're fishing. You take a little bit of this, put it across the middle, and then uh, just wrap your line with it and pull it through. And uh, go ahead and do your leader as well, because you want it sitting up high. One is it's gonna float the fly better, the fly which I personally like sitting on top most of the time. Uh, it's going to float better. Uh, uh, it's going to clean it off, but you know, don't wait till you're in the boat and you're about to fish, you know, to dress the line because you just don't. You got line everywhere. You don't want it in the water wet. Do it at the landing. Do it the night before. Give that a chance to dry on there, and uh, your line will sit up nice and high. But you know, especially with your with your fly line, if it starts to sink, and then you're trying to pick it up to make that cast, then your line is, is dragging a lot and you don't get a, you know, you don't get a real accurate cast and you got water splashing all over the place. So this is something that you want to dress, keep that line clean. It'll also keep this from cracking too, because you got to inspect your line, you know, at, at least once a year, twice a year, and make sure that you're not getting any cracks in here especially around this knot. And we're gonna talk about these knots later. I've got some bigger stuff here to show you. Um, now, the, was what, years ago, Bill Shields and I, when we fished Deer Point up there, 35, 40 years ago, we used to buy these little cans of silicone spray to make your flies float higher. And they were, back then, they were $2 for it. And we got, to, Bill actually came up with it. And he said, you know, that's the same thing as this, this camp dry or any kind of silicone uh, spray that's out there. I mean, this whole can's probably not three bucks, but I will keep this handy right beside me. And as the fly starts to maybe absorb water and the feathers start to, you know, get a little waterlogged, you know, you can shake that fly out, dry it off, and then just hold this out over the boat so you're not getting it in the boat and just spray it down. And what it does is it puts a silicone coating on there 
and it sits up nice and high. I mean, that's quick and it's easy. Uh, there's also a product called uh, Ginks, and uh, that is more of a, a, a pasty type of liquid where you put it on there, you rub it down real good, and, and that's a little more expensive. That's what we use in the mountains. But this camp dry, you spray it down your line a little bit if you want to, keep this fly uh, and these feathers waterproof, and they'll sit up nice and high for you. The other thing they like to do, and I haven't used this one yet, a lot of these legs are really, really long, and they can get tangled up, and they're not, then they can get matted. So I like to come in and maybe take a quarter of an inch or so off of these rubber legs, and that way you don't have those fish too that reach up there and will pull on those legs as bad. So then you don't have this dragging. Just trim off about a quarter inch on the, on the bugs, and uh, of the rubber legs. It'll sit better. They won't grab it as much. Um, so we're, we're going to take this break and we're going to come back, look at the tackle box, and look at a couple of knots that you could use that is simple to, uh, to fly fish with. Welcome back. All right, now this is some basic rod setup and what you need, what you're looking for to fish. And uh, let's talk tackle. This is my entire tackle box, all that I take with me. I got some leader in here. I got an assortment of flies in here. This is an extraordinary handy tool to have. You know, just slip this over. It's got a cutter. It's got an eye cleaner on there, a small knife, uh, and a little set of hemostats here. Um, just simply they'll clip on just about anywhere. But some of these big brim, even the smaller ones who just attack these flies and they get them way down here, you know, this will save your, save your bugs because they're not, you know, necessarily cheap. Uh, save your hands or you can't really get down in there. And a lot of times save your leader. So always a good thing to have, have them clipped on there or, or maybe just have them, uh, have them handy but not anywhere near the side of the boat. Now let's talk about attaching it. Now what I use uh, is uh, I use a loop on the end of my fly line and uh, also instead of just tying directly to the loop, uh, and I'm going to use this, if you can see it this morning, for the fly line. It's simple to make a loop. You just double your line. Just It's really a simple overhand knot and pull it tight. Don't need a double surgeon's knot or anything like that. And this just, you know, uh, now we just got a loop. You can take the tag end off right at, uh, right at, the, uh, right at the knot. Not necessarily going to slip through that top guide as well, but that's okay. You don't want to start running your line through your guide anyway. Uh, now, on the other side, um, I like to do the same thing. Now, let me get this back over here out of the way. I like to do the same thing um, and use a handshake knot. So if you'll take the butt of your leader, make yourself another loop, and then, like I said, run it out about six feet or so. I don't quite have that much right now. But when you're handshaking it, you always want to take the bigger line through the smaller line just like that, and then run the end of your leader through it. These knots are kind of big. And what that does is that gives you a handshake. It's right here in the, right here in the middle. Now, because you're using, you know, the line is so thin, uh, your leader, it can cut into um, your fly line. You have to, be, you have to be very careful about this. But to change this, of course, you can just cut it off. It doesn't matter how tight it pulls, you can push it back together and then just simply run it through and put your new leader on. And, you know, you can tie it directly uh, to the end of the fly line by using just, you know, a simple... uni knot and pulling it tight 
well, I skipped, I missed it with that, but pulling it tight and then you've got a straight line coming off of there with several wraps on here. Um, but the problem with that is you have to cut your fly line each time you mess something up with your leader. So using the two loops, very simple overhand knots, the bigger one through the, the bigger line through the smaller line, that's how I always remember it. I got to have a little tricks to remember things, yeah. Um, and then just work the knots through. Very simple, very tight, preserves your fly line because now I can change it without cutting it. You don't want to tie just a knot directly to it. It's going to cut into your, your leader's going to cut into your fly line. So this, this type of loop system really helps to preserve your actual floating fly line on there, okay? Um, now, uh, Jeff, I, I don't know how well you can zoom in on these. There's a variety of bugs out there that you can use. Uh, you've heard us talk about the wee wall bugs. They are very, very popular. Uh, you can get them just about anywhere, and they're called that because there's a gentleman down in wee who who makes these. But, you know, you've got round dennies and popping bugs. These little rascals right here um, uh, don't have a hard body. They, they have a, a soft body. They're tied. Uh, I tie them. I've got a fly tying desk. But, you, but they're a copy of ones that I've seen before, and they look amazingly like mayflies when it gets time to uh, mayfly season. Now, these you really have to keep sprayed down and coated down because they'll absorb water, and you want to keep them floating on top. Just about any kind of bug, when you're in the right place and they're hitting, and you just lay that thing out there, let it sit, maybe twitch it a little bit, it's a ton of fun. I don't want to forget our peak fishing times today. Uh, which, Jeff, I don't know what I did with them, but uh, check the board right there. I think it's 4.30 to 6.30 this morning and 4.30 to 6.30 this afternoon. I hope you found some of this helpful. I hope you'll get out there. It's just another way to enjoy the outdoors. Have a great day, and God bless you. Winston will be back tomorrow. Thanks for joining us for Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors features hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.